So I'm going to try to use Desmos. I've set this up um, twice because my computer crashed yesterday. But um, I am going to try to explain the whole gist of the remainder of the year, and I'll send an email out to uh, adjust the last couple of sections. Um, this will suffice for the back end of last week uh, with the Khan Academy and stuff, and the, this week is a little bit delayed with this particular video. Um, and there won't be any problems associated with this video. So the whole gist of this whole course, sort of, is how do we model, uh, how do we use mathematics functions to model information, to model data? And what I have here is a set of data. Uh, I created so that it's perfect data. It's not uh, actual data um, provided to us. Um, and what, what we're doing here is I'm going to explain that on the x-axis, we just have 1 through 20. So there's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 20. And it's, it's uh, spaced uh, evenly across. And the green dots here clearly is exponential growth. Though it looks kind of linear down here, but that's because of our scale. So back in chapter four, we talked about this a little bit, and then the front end of um, chapter, I wanna say five or six, I can't remember, where we were talking about logarithms and the semi-log plot. So the gist of the semi-log plot where the y-axis is logarithmic and the x-axis is linear, what we end up seeing is that any kind of exponential function ends up looking linear. And I'm demonstrating that here. So right now we have these green points and that's exponential uh, representation of data. And here's the exp exponential function, y equals e to the x. So if I put one in for x, I get 2.7 blah blah blah, 7.3, 20, 54, blah blah blah, and then Within just 20 steps, I get 10 to the eighth. But that 10 to the eighth is way up here. And notice just to the left of that one unit at 19, it's less than half of that total amount. So it becomes very, very difficult to see what's happening with all of these numbers down here because everything's jammed down at the bottom. You can only really see the last, what, three, maybe four, and see how that growth is. If I had given you this, just these first even if I took away the, the last four points, the first, what is it, uh, 15 points, it's hard to discern what the heck is happening here. It essentially, it looks linear, but it is not linear. So what we can do is we can plot this data on a semi-log plot. Now, hopefully, if you look at this, you'll understand that what I've done here in this third column is graph... I know one comma one, but what I've done was I've taken the natural log of e to the uh, x. I've taken the natural log of this function. We'll do the same thing. I'm going to show you what if we change it to log and we change the scale. So right now my scale goes all the way up to 4.5 times 10 to the eighth. I'm going to turn those points off. And I'm going to turn these points on, and then we're going to change the scale up here to instead of going to that, we're going to look at these purple points. That's these points here. And we're going to just go, instead of going up to 4.5 times 10 to the 8th, we're going to go up to just 21. Now, that goes down to negative 10, so that's going to look kind of weird, but it is what it is. Uh, what just happened? Oh, because my scale goes down to negative 100. So uh, I still need to fiddle with this a little bit. I, have, I can't do this here. They tried to fill the window up, so let's go negative one to uh, 21. And so we end up getting a, a line. So notice how I'm going from zero to 20 and zero to 20, but this isn't really 20 over here. I took the logarithm of each one of these numbers, specifically the natural log that regenerated this one through 20. So our exponential function looks like a line when plotted on semi-log. Now watch, if I change this to logarithm instead of natural log, I'm still gonna get a line. 
the numbers are different, but I still get a line. I get a representation of a line with the points. So in other words, if I get a bunch of data and I'm not sure whether it's actual exponential growth or not, if I plot it on semi-log plot, how do I do that? I take the logarithm of all of my output values and my input values I leave alone. So my whatever my input values are, one comma, the logarithm of the output value, two comma, the logarithm of the output value. So then I get these, these points all lined up. These, it's because it's perfect data, okay? So exponential functions look like lines on semi-log plots. So now we have these other functions called power functions. That's what this particular chapter is all about, seven. Um, you're familiar with them as they are polynomial functions like x cubed, x to the fourth, x to the fifth, x squared, the parabola. Those are power functions if I don't have a bunch of other stuff. If I just have a single term, we think uh, direct variation, inverse variation. And uh, that's why that first section, the first, all that Khan Academy stuff was on direct variation. So here, currently, what I have plotted is just the, the function x cubed, and I've only had plotted the right-hand side of it. Um, so if I put 1 in for x, I get 1. If I put 2 in for x, 2 times 2 times 2 is 8. 3 in for x, 3 times 3 times 3, or 3 cubed is 27. So now I've plotted that data. When I plot that data, it looks like a curve, and I would say that most human beings out there, when they would look at this curve, they would think, oh, it looks like exponential growth, where they're wrong. They're just flat out wrong. And that's why I said I made uh, overtures during lecture before we even departed for spring break that uh, the word exponential, exponential growth, or things are growing exponentially are often misused in movies and popular culture, mostly because it's a whole bunch of people don't actually know what, that, that, what exponential growth actually is. Now, exponential growth, with dealing with the same information, will always, always, always grow faster than any other function, okay? And then, of course, that's why it's always overused. Here, we have the plot of y, uh, y equals x cubed. That's y equals x cubed, okay? If I turn this off and leave the scale alone, Notice I will have taken the log of these output values, but I did not take the log of the input values. They stayed the same, 1 through 20 along the scale. What will happen is we will, again, it'll look like, like it's just a line again because everything's collapsed down there, right? So now let's change the scales again. Let's go from negative 1, and let's go up to, what do I need to get to? 10, looks like. But notice how these points do not form a line. If they formed a line, then I would tell you this set of data is actually exponential, but they're not because I derived the data from x cubed. The exponential function would have been linear on a semi-log plot. This is not linear on a semi-log plot. In fact, it looks kind of like the natural log, but or you know a logarithmic plot. This is not linear on a semi-log plot. Now. For me to demonstrate the next part, I needed to make another graph because I can't change these x values, at least not that I could figure out with Desmos. I have limited table usage and whatnot and statistics in Desmos, but you can do all that stuff as well. So what I've done in this next table, power function on log log, is I've taken these set of, same set of data, this, this same set of y values where I've taken the log base three and I've plotted them on this scale, log base three over here and what I've done, I've, I've taken the logarithm of 1 through 20 on the x-axis. And what happens? This is the logarithm of 1 through 20, base 3. This is the logarithm of uh, the output values of x cubed, logarithm base 3. And notice how it forms a line. Yeah, they get, they get scrunched up together, but it doesn't matter. They still form a line. If I wrote, uh, if I did a line of best fit, it would be a line and it would be uh, an R value of one because I'm, this is perfect data. I used a function to generate the numbers. So, and in, in summary, if I, have, if I have data that I suspect is exponential in nature, if I plot it on a semi-log plot, leave the X values alone, take the logarithm, and it can be any base logarithm, take the logarithm of the Y values and plot those points. If it's linear, 
or very closely linear, then the, the data is exponential. Now we can look at a certain subset of that data and say the growth is exponential from here to here and that it's not from here to the, here. So we can take segments and say we have exponential growth and then it's flattening out, okay? Now, the second part is if I have data that's following a power function, x cubed, x to the fifth, x to the seventh, whatever, it doesn't matter. If my data is following a power function, which also means it's not growing exponentially, if it follows a power function, if I plot those values on a log log graph, and I'll explain, that means I take all the x values and I take the logarithm of some base, base three, base seven, it doesn't matter, and I take the logarithm, you could try using the same base, it might be more clear that way. So log base 10 of all the x values, log base 10 of all the y values, and I plot those points. If those points are form a line, then that data is actually behaves like a power function, okay? So that's what we're trying to do is if I get raw data, imagine you were, if you were working for the CDC, or if you were out in the field and you were measuring uh, the population of frogs or a population of tadpoles or bacteria, uh, algae, whatever, because this is for science, it's not just for health workers, healthcare workers, um, then you could determine if your growth is exponential or if it's just a power function, which we could rest easy depending on what the situation is, um, and you could model it, all right? So that's what, uh, that's what I've been waiting for. I had to build this and I had to build it twice. So sorry for the delay.